what if we could capture images from our dreams right is it possible to generate images purely based on our thoughts so this is where researchers from china okay have created something called as dream diffusion so this is about generating high quality images from brain eeg signals eeg stands for brain electroencephalogram so eeg recordings actually captures brain activities right so uh, you know can you actually convert these eeg signals into images basically translating our thoughts into text before creation or you know by converting these thoughts into images so what can you do if you were able to do these kind of things it can help in uh, you know psychotherapy having the potential to help children with autism and those with language disabilities it can help in capturing those fleeting inspirations which we as humans get right and it can also maybe in the future help us visualize our dreams okay that is what inspired the name dream diffusion so how does this work right how does dream diffusion work so if you look at how dream uh, diffusion works is that you have your eeg signals okay you have an eeg encoder right so on this eeg signals on a lot of eeg signals they do some kind of masked signal modeling right with large scale noisy eeg data to get you know good eeg embeddings right so how they do it is that they give these masked eeg signals you know the ground truth they try to reconstruct the ground truth and there is this encoder decoder architecture and there is this latent representation which comes out of this okay using these latent representations what they do is that they fine tune you know a pre trained stable diffusion network right by giving uh, you know these eeg signals basically these eeg signals are given into you know an another um, network where there is a projection layer where they try to make this eeg embeddings as close to the clip image encoder embeddings okay this is where they try to align ecg uh, eeg text and image spaces right now this is where they require eeg parrot images you have the eeg signals plus the image which the subject has seen which is your parrot image okay so here once the pre training phase is done a subject's eeg is passed to this network you get the latent representation and this alignment of eeg embedding along with the clip image encoder embedding happens over here right thereby this eeg embedding is becomes as close to an image embedding now that image embedding is then given to your stable diffusion network to generate your final image okay this latent representation is also given to this denoising de unit of the uh, stable diffusion models okay and in this way you can generate the image from an eeg signal right so the three components are masked signal pre training uh, it is an robust eeg encoder right fine tuning with limited eeg image pairs with pre trained stable diffusion and aligning the eeg text and image spaces using clip encoders okay so that is this is the idea over here right and they have explained the proposed method over here in detail this is about masked model masked signal pre training for the eeg representation so this is on a wide variety of eegs which have been collected for different subjects okay but then in the second stage what they do is fine tuning with stable diffusion on limited eeg image pairs okay um so here they talk about uh, you know the cross attention of the unit can also uh, incorporate conditional information from the eeg data so especially the output of the eeg encoder is further projected with the embedder into the embedding then this uh, eeg representation is incorporated into unit by a cross attention layer implementing attention so that is what is this part okay in the stable diffusion now the third part is about you know how to align uh, eeg text and image spaces for this what they do is that they will fine tune the eeg representation obtained from the pre training stage by making it more suitable for generating images 
so clip is uh, you know uh, stable diffusion also uses clip for um, uh, its uh, getting um, your image embeddings right or text embeddings basically in stable diffusion it's basically from text to image right so getting the text embeddings it uses clip so what they are doing over here is that uh, they propose an additional clip supervision to assist in the alignment of EEG text and image space EEG features obtained from the pre-trained encoder in the first stage is transformed into embeddings with the same dimension as those of clip through a projection layer then they use a loss function to minimize the distance between EEG embeddings and the image embeddings obtained from clip image encoder so this is where the fine tuning process happens right in this stage in this way they are trying to make this uh, embedding as close as the EEG embedding as close to image embeddings so for this you require ground truth parity image okay this is comparatively lesser data okay so with this uh, process they are able to generate uh, images like this which are shown over here right so this is your parrot image data with EEG okay and these are images which are generated by the model okay so for example this is the parrot uh, image of a chair along with the EEG signal and when that EEG signal alone is given to this network these are some of the images which are sampled from this network so it is kind of rep, uh, generating in the same category it is done at a category level okay it is not done at a object level as such it is done at a category level for example this image of the cat you know the eeg of the signal eeg signal of the person who was observing this cat is uh, this image of the cat is recorded and from that eeg they are able to generate these images of cats okay these are selected images uh, which are shown over here across various categories right the ground truth and the sampling results across say various categories of objects or images okay the uh, thing is that if what they say is that there is already brain to image a model and that gives results which are much more poorer when compared to this particular model over here across certain categories okay so if you take the image of an airliner this is the kind of uh, you know image which has been generated from eeg recordings in this model whereas the older uh, another publication brain to image this is the kind of model which is much more poorer okay so as i said for the first stage they collected approximately for the pre training uh, you know 120k eeg data samples from 400 subjects and they use this for pre training okay but for the second stage of parrot eeg data uh, they obtained EEG recordings from six subjects basically this EEG data set ImageNet EEG data set which had EEG recordings obtained from six subjects they were shown 2000 images belonging to 40 different categories of objects each category consists of 50 images and each image was presented for 0.5 seconds followed by a 10 second pause for every 50 images so these are the parrot image data set okay for the fine tuning right and uh, what they said is that um, when they did these ablation studies the whole model okay with pre-training and then your clip uh, what you call uh, alignment of EEG embeddings they could get this kind of an image given this is the ground truth image okay but without pre-training only using clip they got this image right without pre-training using just clip uh, without pre-training on EEG using just clip embeddings aligning just aligning the clip embeddings they got this right and as they you try out various combinations the whole model works better than say just uh, without pre-training and clip or either combinations of them right that's the idea over here um, there are some limitations over here EEG data only provides coarse grained information at the category level in the experiment results um, there are some failure case also where categories are mapped to other categories with similar shape or colors this is because human brain may consider shape and color as two important factors when recognizing objects so nevertheless this has potential to be used in a wide range of applications such as neuroscience psychology and human computer interaction okay 
Another thing to note over here is that the accuracy levels are really not that great. Okay, with the model, it's only 45.8%. It's below random choice, whatever it is below 50%, right? But this is an interesting work. Maybe in the future, when we have more and more refinement, um, say on EEG signals, maybe we get better results. Or maybe there is a physical limitation in terms of the knowledge or in terms of what EEG signals capture and however good your other lower stages of models are, you may not still be able to capture say images directly from thoughts. You may never know how it's going to turn out. I hope you like this video on dream diffusion. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video.